United States just signed a deal with the Taliban, and a real asterisk to our whole don't negotiate with terrorists motif. Now I'm going to do something new for the internet and actually try to figure out what's in the agreement we just accepted. Fortunately enough, peace in Afghanistan is not quite as complicated as buying a song on iTunes. So this agreement is only 4 pages. Finally, an agreement where my scroll bar wasn't barely clinging to existence. Now, If you want to understand the larger context of this peace deal, I made a video about that last week, so check it out at the end. With that out of the way, let's get into it. Now, To quote the first line of this peace deal, a comprehensive peace agreement is made of 4 parts. So naturally, this peace deal is split up into 3 parts. Wait, what? Well, that's certainly not a good sign. The three parts are part one, what America's committing to do, part two, what the Taliban are committing to do, and part three, a sort of vague statement of our goals requesting recognition by the UN Security Council. First, what did America just commit to? Well, quite a few things, but it can be summarized by saying, get the heck out of here and don't come back. While the United States and Taliban cannot agree on much, the one thing we seem to be able to see eye to eye on nowadays is the United States should not be in Afghanistan. This deal creates a two-tiered withdrawal in which over the first 135 days, America reduces the number of our troops in Afghanistan to 8,600. At that point, we're going to stop, check in, get the lay of the land, and just see if the Taliban are making good on part two of this deal, which I'll get to in a second. And if they are, America and our coalition allies have nine and a half months to remove all remaining troops from Afghanistan. Wow, that feels suspiciously simple, but as a guy who has to summarize this stuff, well, not complaining. The second commitment we just made is a little stranger from a regional power dynamic perspective. A prisoner swap between the government of Afghanistan and the Taliban. Now that might not sound weird on its face, but let me emphasize one part of that sentence. Between the government of Afghanistan and the Taliban. Unfortunately, the government of Afghanistan did not participate in these negotiations. It's a bit like the UPS guy showing up with a package for my roommate and me saying, sure I'll sign for it, I'm sure I'll want it, right? But that deal appears to have hit a stumbling block. Afghanistan's President Ashraf Ghani says the government did not commit to releasing 5,000 Taliban members. A prisoner swap was part of the accord signed in Qatar. The agreement is meant to pave the way for the withdrawal of all American and NATO troops from Afghanistan and a lasting peace. Oh, wait, you guys didn't just order a package? That's not great. Especially because the government of Afghanistan is on its own quest right now to prove to its citizens that it's not a puppet of the American government. I guess at this point the US is going to have to negotiate the Taliban negotiation with Afghanistan. The next commitment might have been the hardest for the Trump administration to sign. When the Taliban and the government of Afghanistan meet, America is going to begin the process of removing sanctions on the Taliban. Sanctioning people is how this administration shows they care. The goal is to have all sanctions removed by the end of August of this year. Similarly, America sits at the world's cool kids table and we're going to tell all of our friends at the UN Security Council about increasing diplomacy with the Taliban and getting them off of the UN sanctions list. Now, The last thing that America committed to was Afghanistan has told us repeatedly to get out in this agreement, but they also want us to stay out. They don't want America cramering in the door a month after withdrawing because things aren't going the way we planned. Specifically, the United States and its allies will have to refrain from threat or the use of force against the territorial integrity or political independence of Afghanistan, or intervening in its domestic affairs. Now to the fun part of this agreement. What did we get? Let's open up this goodie bag and see what's inside. First, the big one. The Taliban will not let individuals or terrorist groups to use its soil to plan attacks against the United States. Now That might not sound like the biggest thing to some of you, but remember, it was half of our rationale for invading in the first place. On my orders, 
the United States military has begun strikes against al-Qaeda terrorist training camps and military installations of the Taliban regime in Afghanistan. These carefully targeted actions are designed to disrupt the use of Afghanistan as a terrorist base of operations and to attack the military capability of the Taliban regime. Well, we definitely didn't get the military capacity of the Taliban regime part done, but glass half full or half empty. Similarly, if America eats at the popular table, the Taliban eats at the goth kids table. With this agreement, they have to tell everyone at their table that they will no longer eat with any group that threatens the United States or our allies. The next piece is Afghanistan domestic policy related. The Taliban needs to take steps to prevent people or groups inside Afghanistan from attacking the United States. You know, I'm starting to see a pattern with all these compromises. This is different than previous requirements because it doesn't specify any specific group affiliation and implies proactive anti-terrorist actions from the Taliban. It also says that terrorist groups can't recruit, train, or fundraise in Afghanistan. So I guess the Al-Qaeda bake sale has to be postponed. Next, they have to tweak their asylum process to make sure the people who they accept asylum requests from are, say it with me everyone, not a threat to the United States or our allies. Also, those refugees and asylum seekers have to be dealt with according to international immigration law and the other terms of this agreement. Although so far, the only term of this agreement is, if they don't want to attack America, eh, they're fine with us. Lastly, the Taliban cannot issue visas, passports, travel documents, or legal documents to people who pose a threat to America or our allies. So okay, it's pretty clear to see what America's goals were in this negotiation. As long as the Taliban doesn't try to sucker punch us, we'll back off. The next step in the negotiation is going to start in about a month, when we sit the Taliban down with the government of Afghanistan and have them negotiate a new constitution for the country. That continues to be the real war prolonging challenge because it's hard to find a middle ground between a religious dictatorship and an equal rights supporting democracy. That Venn diagram is two separate circles. As those negotiations begin on March 10th, you bet we will be watching. Until then, thank you and that's all I have to say about that. Hello YouTube, for broader perspective on the entire Afghan peace process, click here. I'd like to thank my patrons for helping me put out my videos. If you want to support more independent, nonpartisan news looking into the overlooked, join this growing list of exceptional individuals by clicking on that link in the description. Also remember to subscribe and ring that bell so that freedom will continue to ring. Give me a thumbs up if you like what you saw, and lastly, as always, thank you for watching.